There we go. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah, welcome again to Recovery Uncovered with Danya and B. So uh, today we have the wonderful Miss Liz Todd um, here with us today. Uh, she's going to be talking a little bit about us, hanging out with us, um, chatting it up, and sharing some of her experience, strength, and hope with everyone. Hi, Liz. How are you doing today, Liz? Hello. I'm good. How are y'all? Good. Glad to have you on today. <laughs> Thanks for yeah. having me. Busy morning, busy day. Yeah. You know? So, <laughs> um, so tell us, Liz, like, I know you men, you've been here with, with Rise and, you know, before it was Rise for a while. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not going to get the extent, right, of how long, you know, but it seems like a, a, a nice, nice long time. So tell us a little bit about how um, I don't know, recovery came into your life. Um, what was it for you that, that, that was that pivot moment that made a difference? Yeah. Well, there was probably a few pivot moments, <laughs> yeah. to be to honest. We have <laughs> multiple <laughs> pivot moments. Yeah. Um, so RISE Recovery, which is formerly Palmer Drug Abuse Program, or PDAP, I got introduced to as a teenager. Wow. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I was smoking weed on the back of the school bus. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure my brother told my parents. <laughs> and, um, and so they took me to, to put up mm -hmm. at the time, you know, and so I went there just to get them off my back. <laughs> right yeah. um went through the motions did the meetings went to the activities and stuff like that you know um but i wasn't really into it at the time i was just like okay i'm gonna do this so y'all get off my back right oh. i was 14. 14. <laughs> yeah yeah so it was nice right um, so yeah, I was 14 and I went, I went as far as, and here's, here's what really got me at that time. Um, cause I was attending for a little while and they were giving out these monkey fist, <laughs> which symbolized, which is this necklace I'm wearing right here. And this monkey fist symbolizes, um, 30 days of recovery. When you get 30 <laughs> days of recovery, they they have a little ceremony and they give this to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And I went as far as even saying that I was sober so that I could get the monkey fist to show <laughs> that, <laughs> you know, I just, so I got a dishonest monkey fist even at that time. Yeah. Um, but I tell you what, it, God is just amazing in that he even used that experience because after I got the monkey fist, I really started getting to know the other teenagers in the group and and I was like building these relationships that I had never ever experienced before you know and it was truly God doing for me what I could not do for myself you know one of the things I love about PDAP and RISE now is that when it talks about God it talks about um, experience through the love of the group Mm. Right. And that the love of that group was my way of experiencing God at the time. And I didn't even realize it. And they took us on a retreat out to um, out to Port A one weekend. And while we were out there, they called an emergency meeting and they said, we heard somebody is lying about their recovery. And I felt so convicted. I broke down crying and I confessed. And it was, they probably weren't even talking about me, to be honest. But <laughs> 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 I 
they probably weren't, right? But I felt so convicted because of the friendships that I had made in within that group um, that I just, I couldn't do it anymore, you know? And I broke down and I confessed. And, and of course, I was met with love and understanding. And, and from that point on, I was sober for uh, probably like two years, just from that feeling alone. You know, and um, but the the unfortunate part is that I never got a sponsor and I never worked the steps mm. during that time. You know, I was I was a big part of the group and I, you know, I did counseling sessions. I did the meetings. I did everything else, but I never got a sponsor and all that. And so eventually when I stopped going, you know, little by little, stopped going to meetings, stopped hanging around with everybody. And then those thoughts came back of, oh, well, I can just have one wine cooler, you know, I'll be okay. It was just a phase I was going through all those, all those insane thoughts that, that, um, the disease will give us. Right. And so then I went back out, um, yeah. And, and I did that for another 13 years. And I mean, it was, it's so true that you pick up right where you left off as soon as I had that one wine cooler within weeks I was doing things that I said I would never do you know and it it was just like bam instantaneously right where I left off that's where I was again and um so I kept it up for another 13 years amazingly I don't know how but um I managed to function in one way or another you know um but 13 years later as an adult, it was, an, my life was really starting to fall apart, you know? And this time, yeah, I didn't, it wasn't the legal trouble that came, that brought me to my knees. It, it wasn't the parents, you know, it wasn't the frothy emotional appeal from my family. Um, this time it was like, my life is starting to fall apart and my insides, I was so full of fear and anxiety that I could not function anymore, you know, and it felt like there was no way out of that. And I was just going to be stuck like that forever. Um, so at that, that's the point where I was like, okay, I have to do something, you know, um, I'm getting ready to lose my family. I've been a single mom before and, and, and it's not easy. And, um, now I have two kids <laughs> and, and there's just no way I can continue my drinking and using career and be a single mom again, you know? Um, and so I remembered, I remembered the love and understanding that I received as a teenager over at Padap. And so I went right back there and I walked back in the doors 13 years later mm-hmm. and it was crazy because I walked in the doors and there was a woman there. And as soon as she saw me, she remembered my first and last name. Oh yeah. And called it out. And I was like, Oh my gosh, somebody remembers me. That's just <laughs> amazing. You know? Cause it's scary to walk in those doors. Yeah. It's so scary. Yeah. And so to walk in the doors that many years later and still be remembered was just, it was, it was just a godsend for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but this time I went, you know, right away. I was like, I know I have to get a sponsor. I have to work these steps. I have to do the whole deal. Right. And so I did. And, um, and that was February 16th of 2007. Mm-hmm. And that is still my sobriety date today. So, yeah. Um, it's been definitely an adventure. <laughs> you know, and, and I say there was a, a few times that, um, that, you know, that, that life has um, made me jump into recovery, um, you know, and that was that was a couple of them. And really, the third time for me was when I was uh, I was about a year and a half, maybe two years into my recovery, mm-hmm. and then I found out that my son was using, mm. 
And then I felt, and at that point, I felt like a newcomer all over again. <laughs> it was like by then I was even I was even working at Rise, you know, I was working at Rise, and I still felt like I knew nothing of what to do with this, you know. Yeah. It's just so different when it's your own. Mm -hmm. um, so, so then I started attending family group. <laughs> I started doing the other side of the recovery um, and you know and I, I just I don't know God's just so amazing because I, I don't think I would have been able to handle it had I not already gone through what I went through and been in recovery and got my foundation of recovery under me um, before my son started down his path you know right. mm -hmm. and um it's just it's just been amazing the things that um, we can go through in recovery and still have a sense of I'm okay, you know, still have that sense of peace and serenity and um, not have to lose it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Man, it's so important Liz, on what you on what you spoke on as far as um, our family component that we offer. Um, because how, you know, substances, it, it affects everyone, right? And it doesn't even matter, right? Like, here you are, yeah, I'm a person in recovery, but now it's like, what do I do? Now, it, you know, the tables are, are kind of like turned, and it's like, it's your own child. So having that 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 support, you know, and knowing where, where to go, you know, going to the, the family group meetings, like you were saying, being a part of that and participating in it was a game changer, obviously. Um, Right. Is that what I'm, I'm getting from you? Right. For what you said. Oh, yes. Yes. And yeah. and, um, you know, my son went to the siblings, the, the children and siblings group when he was younger, uh -huh. you know, and so that's another component that Rise offers that I don't see anywhere else is for the children and siblings of the person using, uh -huh. you know, um, and then as my daughter got a little bit older, she went to that to that group as well and and so yeah because everybody is affected and and that is just one of the things i love about rise is they include the whole family in the recovery process <laughs> really yeah. important it takes a village and it affects yep. us all you know oh yeah and it affects us all so what's one um i don't know so tell me like one one key thing that that you've learned that you feel like is one of the most important things that you do still on a daily for your recovery and and if you can give me one like i don't know some good promise that that you've received um on on your journey of recovery sure um you know as far as my recovery um it's really step 10 11 and 12 you know um trust mm -hmm. God, clean house and work with others. And, um, you know, my being of service is a, might look a little bit different than others because um, I have five kids in the house. <laughs> yeah. And so I am constantly of service at home, you know? Yeah. And, um, but one of the promises that, that has come true for me and continues to come true and it's one of my favorite um but it it's in the big book of alcoholics anonymous it says that he will provide what we need as long as we do his work well mm. right and so i mean i went from i went from a very um successful steady business to working to a nonprofit in the middle of the recession. What was that 10, 11 years ago? Yeah. In the middle of a recession. <laughs> um, but because I'm doing God's work, I have never had to worry about that fear of financial insecurity has never been there. I mean, I took a pay cut and went to a nonprofit in the middle of a recession, you know, yeah. and he is just taking care of me this, this whole time. Um, so I, you know, I can go on and on about the promises, but those, that's probably my favorite. And, um, 
I continue to see it coming true. Yes. So. Thank you, Liz. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Danya, Liz, yeah. I think we're about to, we're yeah. almost running out of time, so we're getting ready to wrap up. But man, thank you so much for sharing uh, your journey with us. I really appreciate that, Liz. Well, yeah. thank you. I love this. Yeah. It's cool to do. And on that, yeah. look, that, that is, along with what Liz was saying, Rise Recovery's mission is to help teens, young adults, and families overcome mm -hmm. the effects of drug and alcohol and partner with the community in education and prevention. Uh, we do serve greater San Antonio area, specifically ages 12 to 35, and their family members. I can't stress that enough because it's a family disease. And we do not charge for any of our services. Thanks to the financial support we get from our community, there's no barriers. You don't need insurance to come and get the support you need. If you or someone you know is struggling with drug or alcohol abuse, um, or you're not even sure, please call any of our staff is here to talk to you. The number is 210-227-2634 or email us at info at riserecovery.org and learn more at riserecovery.org. Um, we ask that you please share this with anyone you know who is seeking support or struggling. Thank yeah. you for watching our webcast. See you all right. next week. Thank you guys. So good to see you ladies. Y'all have a blessed day. You too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to stop it. <laughs>